Um, I guess what I was hoping for was suggestions and, uh, and uh, maybe what people thought might be the first step uh, in a process to, and, you know, and that maybe that would in, in, you know, spark some questions and get, them to get some stuff happening. And um, I don't know. If anybody you know, cares to comment at any time, just put up their hands. Or otherwise, I'll, you know, I could just blab all night. And oh, <laughs> yeah, that would be that would suck. So let's. Let, how about and maybe a microphone uh, for the time being, and then in the the microphone will be the conch, you know, and everybody can speak and people can listen and comment. So. nights ago and uh, I didn't realize how it affected me until the next day when I started crying at least on three different occasions and every time I cried it was because uh, there was this guy who was playing the bagpipes and he lived on Cape Breton Island and he had to go into the mine into the coal mine uh, like half a mile underground so that he could earn a living for his family and, you know, the name of the movie is Margaret's Museum, and I don't want to be preserved in formaldehyde because I have to give up my life, you know, to some dubious enterprise. I want to do an enterprise that's going to be good for me and for the earth. And, you know, I read a book like Industrial Hemp, and I see hydrocarb you know, hydrocarbons or carbohydrates, and to me, right now in 95, maybe not back in 35, but now in 95, the, the choice seems clear. You know, we've got to slow down on the, on the hydrocarbons, you know, and speed up on the carbohydrates. And hemp seems like a good carbohydrate to, to, to use. So, um, you know, that's, you know, that's, that's, that's just what I was feeling when, when what you were saying. Ed? Oh, thank you very much, Chairman Martin. Did everyone have a good supper? Good. Now, have we got some farmers? Have we got some farmers left in the audience here? You got a few? Did you talk about what kind of an organization, or think about what kind of an organization you want to see? Now, let me just—I'll just, uh, I'll just talk for a couple minutes while you're thinking. There are two ways of doing it, right? One is a free-for-all, where you go find the market. Yeah, I, I say free for all. I should that is that a negative connotation? One is the an independent entrepreneurial style. Okay, where you you go and find a market. You get a contract in hand. You go to the government, governing body, whatever they decide to set up. You say, here's my contract. And they stamp it gives you permission to buy the seed, plant the crop. Okay, that's one alternative. A uh, fellow from Ag Canada who uh, resides in Winnipeg here said, this is one alternative. The other alternative is to act as a cooperative. Okay? There are all sorts of marketing boards for different industries. Marketing board style governs the amount that can be grown. First of all, they try and ascertain how large the market is. Then they try and find the producers to produce to that market at a profitable price. They try to discourage overproduction. Uh, for all of the farmers in the audience and anyone else that knows anything about overproduction, if you have inelastic demand, the minute you overproduce 10%, you're going to take about a 40% <coughs> cut in the price of your commodity. Is there a question? Oh, well, okay. Uh, there's a market for so many tons of linseed oil in the world. Say, a million metric tons of linseed oil, okay? And no more, not a drop more, not an eyedropper full more, okay? And you produce another 10,000 tons. We're 
and you sell it, you actually force it onto the market, what's going to happen to the price? Yeah, it heads south. So that's in elastic demand. Now, there's two ways of cooperating, and one is in a very formal marketing board style. And if you look at the U.S. experience, the U.S. is the, 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 the land of the free, the home of the brave, very independent-minded entrepreneurs for generations. But what has happened in the last five years? Tell me what's happened in the last five years, sir. I've been in Ukraine. I can't tell you. Okay. <laughs> what's happened in the last five years is they're shifting back to the cooperative movement. All of the new semolina mills, all of the value-added processing, and not say all, that's an over-exaggeration. A majority of the, of the new processing, the majority of all of the new value-added enterprises that are being built in North Dakota, Minnesota, are being built by farm cooperatives. American Crystal Sugar is a classic example of a roaring success, success story. Okay, So now, uh, you can have that system, or you can have a less formal system, where you simply use cooperatives to help you uh, get going, as in, uh, for instance, I'm a delegate with Manitoba Pool Elevators. Nobody tells me how much wheat to grow. They just tell me when I can sell it, okay? So I can grow as all, my whole farm into wheat if I want. Uh, the pools and UGG are member-owned. They work for the, on behalf of the member, but they aren't marketing boards. We have a marketing board called the Canadian Wheat Board. It's not really a marketing board. It has accredited exporters, I think about 30 of them, not quite, 29, 28. So those are the, the types of systems that you can choose. Or the government will choose one for you, but they won't. This is too much trouble, okay? They are not going to legalize hemp just because you think it's a nifty idea. They're going to legalize hemp because you are a, a, the, a driving force, you saying there's a market out there and I wish Canadian farmers could produce to it. So d the government isn't going to do it for you. You must come up with some sort of a structure in cooperation with departments of agriculture, federally and provincially, and provincial uh, minister of cooperative development in the case of a marketing board. So you're going to have to decide what it's going to look like. Okay, you're going to have to decide if you want control of the product, the uh, most of the production and processing, or if you just strictly want to do production and let uh, and 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 let entrepreneurs and. Uh, and I don't say this negatively, multinationals, because we have Cargill here, and we're glad that we have Cargill in attendance. Or do you want the Cargill's ADM, ConAgris, to, to facilitate that process? Because they certainly can. They, they have the capability and they have the capital to do that. Okay. I understand what you're trying to do, but you're giving us a bunch of options, right? I'm getting you to think the juice is flowing, yes. That is, ex I'm leading you to the watering hole, yes. <laughs> so would you uh, like to come up and tell us what you think? Uh, well, I'm not a farmer, so I'm just trying to, uh, to get you to your point. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, uh, I was young once. Dragging this out is what he's saying. I was young once too. <laughs> <laughs> I work in the government and I, I, I go through these things all the time. I'm just trying to how long was I talking? Six minutes? Well, Not bad. I almost felt like I was bad at work, so let's, I think I, let's go for it. It's a good point. Like, it, it's options. And if, do we want Who's to, next? No, no, you're, you're right. You're going with the options. I like that. No, I, I, you, you, you've got two options, and in those two options, you've got a couple of subsets. Okay, so now let's hear what some, some of the farmers think. Um, 
just thought, uh, you know, it's gonna it's gonna be industry and agriculture and the market all working together somehow. Um, for the farmers, in from the perspective of an overview, for the farmers <laughs> to get something worked out and be a a voice, a, a unified voice in one way or the other, whether it's a whole bunch of independent people doing a campaign or whether you go under an umbrella group and lobby from that point, I think it'll have to be discussed and there should probably be some sort of initiative taken by one of the farmers here to uh, move something like that through a community of people and uh, you know because there will t be a time when it'll crystallize and you'll have to and then if you have something in place when no one else has anything or even conceived that it was there, you, it'll be, you'll, you know, it might put everybody in a good position then. So, um, and then there's this, you know, market and industry aspect of this whole thing that has to sort of come together. So maybe uh, I'm just gonna. Yeah. I uh, I represent a company that specializes in marketing and finance, and uh, which we company? Uh, Renaissance Natural Resources out of Vancouver. Um, we're working with a, a lot of uh, professional people in the field, PhDs in the pulp and paper industry, et cetera. And uh, I just want to encourage you to basically get united because as someone that has specialized in looking at the market, I can see that there is definitely interest in a worldwide uh, demand for environmentally friendly products. This is happening in various regions. For example, every single country in Europe now cultivates hemp. They've gotten their act together. They're getting into value-added products. Um, this is happening in the third world countries. Uh, if it doesn't happen in Canada, you know, it would be a shame because we have a real advantage here. Uh, we can produce a product that the world needs, the world wants, and we can export it to a very hungry consumer-oriented market in the States, but only if we cooperate. And I think that it does take a leap of faith it does take, you know, perhaps some uh, uh, jumping in, uh, but uh, I think those rewards will be uh, returned to you. Um, as a marketer, uh, I can see that the value for hemp is in value-added products. Um, and uh, I think we're going to have to break the mold where marketing companies are going to have to share with the farmers. Uh, I see a world where the farmers, you know, uh, allow the marketing boards to market these value-added products, and then we split the profits 50-50, so that the farmers can share in the value-added products. The reason I, s I say this is because basically um, this is a trillion dollar industry. Uh, you look at Europe right now, and you look at them being much more environmentally aware than North Americans are perhaps because they have less of their environment to abuse. Um, you see that the demand for environmentally friendly products is very high. For example, the German uh, hemp industry went from zero Deutschmarks in 1993 to 40 million Deutschmarks in 1994. That's a tremendous increase. Um, why can't that happen here? The only thing that's stopping it is lack of organization. And as a marketer and as somebody that knows there's an interest in value-added products. Um, I mean, we're just waiting for people to get organized so that, you know, we can distribute the products. Um, and it would be a shame if I had to go to a third world country to get these products because I would like to benefit my country. Um, unfortunately, with typical Canadian reservatism, uh, <laughs> you know, we end up taking one step forward, two steps back. And unfortunately, this is neither the time nor the place to do that because the longer we let Europe develop its uh, value-added product base, the quicker they're going to come into the North American market, the more they're going to achieve brand name recognition, and the less able you guys will be able to market your products when finally, three or four years down the road, the Canadian government gets exact together to legalize hemp. I think what we need to do is organize ourselves, go to the government with a plan and say, listen, we've done all your footwork for you. We realize that you don't have the money or the time to spend on this, so we've done your work for you. Here's the plan. This is what we all agree on, and this is what we're going to do about it. If this doesn't happen within the next year, you might as well kiss the opportunity goodbye. Now, this is just my opinion, but I've spent two and a half years doing the research to support this claim. And, uh, you know, I know that China 
has 6,000 years experience cultivating hemp. The Ukraine has hundreds of years experience cultivating this crop. Canada used to produce the best hemp in the world, arguably. But I think, and I think a lot of farmers agree with me, that we still could. And we could beat the world. Uh, however, we need to have a plan, right? And I think the government will back us if we come as an organized body. The reason is, is because you look over into Europe. The Europeans have made the statement that by the year 2005, they don't want to rely on North American pulp and building materials. So, I mean, what's that going to mean to the North American industry, specifically Canada? Uh, there's going to be new crops for the 21st century. Either we accept that this crop is going to proceed very rapidly because it's a rediscovery of a product, or we just turn a blind eye and let the rest of the world profit from this. Uh, speaking personally, my company is going to get involved in this and it's up to you guys if we get involved with Canadian farmers or not. And I would like to be involved with Canadian farmers, but you know, it's up to you guys to organize and I have no problem at all sharing the profits because I believe there will be so much money to go around, it will be ridiculous. That's basically all I have to say. Thanks. This switch? <laughs> yeah. After having come out of the chemical world of growing crops and gone organic, along with that is a mindset that it's not just farmers. Um, we as we worked with a number of bakeries here and processors, and it's amazing how much of a community feeling you really get when you drop out of that business of just taking the grain to the elevator, throwing it on the semi, it's gone, just kiss her goodbye, you know, get the check, let's go home. Uh, now you start to see who's eating the food, and this whole thing where people have got into community shared agriculture, where it's all starting to come home now, and I think that's the great part about the organic movement, and it moves right in with the hemp movement where people are starting to work together and it's not just the farmer. Like, a, like Ed, I, you mentioned just set the farmers aside and we'll work together to market. And that's great, you know, but I don't like doing that anymore. I want to be a part of this. Like all you guys are a part of this whole thing. And I want it to be an organization that involves everybody, not just farmers. I won't be a part of an organization that's just farmers because I think that's where we were. The future is being a community where it's urban and rural and we hope that on our farm we can facilitate part of that change. So at any rate, if I want it to be a, as one. I guess most. Who are you? I think most people here know me. No, no, no. That's, that's an right. assumption that you can't make. All right, my name is Mark Shenye. I'm the current sitting president, soon to be past president of Saskatchewan Hemp Growers Association. And I have a few things I'd like to say. Our friends from the Ukraine gave me an Easter egg today. Easter egg symbolizes resurrections of something old also symbolizes a new beginning. I like the idea of everybody working together. I'm a journeyman boilermaker by trade. I've worked building pulp and paper mills, oil refineries, nuclear reactors. I recognize that these technologies are outdated. They're going to destroy this planet. I also recognize that they can be replaced by hemp. I'm working for something new. 
I can see a lot of possibilities, a lot of things happening here. We've got enough people here, the right people, that we can work together, set up something, and establish it into position before we're in a position where there's too many other people that are going to come in and take this the wrong way. We can establish it that the person, the guy that does the work, that gets the benefits from this. We have to work together. We have to cooperate farmer hand in hand with entrepreneur, businessman, the whole nine yards. I don't know what we're waiting for. Everything's in position. Let's start sitting around, draw it up, put it together. Monday, we've got a meeting in Saskatchewan, the second annual annual general meeting of SAS Kemp. I want to see some of these farmers here coming out, see how we're organized out there. We want to work with you. We want Alberta to work with us. We want BC. The other provinces, each province to work together. We establish a national board from those different separate groups, and that way we're going to be able to control this industry and run it the way that it should be run. And that's all I got to say. Food for thought. Um, anyone else want to say anything? Uh, I just I don't you know I don't know if uh, organizing on provincial levels that's sort of the way we're doing it now. Um, j but it seems that uh, borders are are uh, becoming less and less of a thing with uh, rapid transportation. Um, like I I don't know the person who lives next door to me but I know very well people who live on the other side of the world because I see them regularly and so like my my community is based on not ge geography anymore but it's based on uh, you know a, f a whole bunch of different things um, it, uh, it's the farmers have a different world than I do because I, I travel a lot um, but they are they deal a little bit more with um, things on a real level like they have they're planted you know and they're there and they have and they have to draw up boundaries so they have those boundaries to deal with they live in a different thing and so I I think part of the problem with this whole hemp thing is that it, it touches upon so many different areas and so many different sectors that the, that the communities don't properly know how to communicate with each other um, um, they don't completely like they speak the same language but they're coming from it from a different part of the reality. So, uh, I don't know. It's to say it's all one is is uh, it's it's nice. I I you know we are definitely all one. But I'd like to, what I think we need is to be able to assign responsibilities and tasks uh, so that the individual mechanisms of the one work better. Now, I know that the thing that's stopping all of this great stuff from happening is a piece of legislation. Who knows how to change that piece of legislation? And uh, you know, anybody? Does anybody have an idea or a, a, a plan? Has anybody thought about it? Like, because um, we have. Why don't we get those people to yeah. sit in a corner, kind of thinking? So, you know, you know, or did anybody want, ha, have any suggestions about that? Because you know, we've got the criteria met, and uh, we're, we're going to have to get the infrastructure built up by utilizing foreign fiber, foreign seed foreign cloth, where both the you and I entrepreneurs dealing in the cloth and producing products, and that cloth is coming from somewhere else. We, we need to show not only ourselves, but the government and the public, that we can produce things that are functional and will create value added. Now, That's that why we need to work as a group to go in there as a unified that you, As a group of farmers and, in, and, and entrepreneurs, we start to bring in fiber from other places and experiment and get it into mills and produce it, or oils that they're going to do in Saskatchewan from Poland. And eventually we will have products that are coming, or being produced from these, these uh, foreign resources. I, I think I know what to say, <laughs> which, is the, which is something. Okay. I, I yeah, which is something that I'm sort of, uh, I think the place to begin is the oils. You know, I, I really I believe that that's to, uh, that's possible this year if if we really if we're awesome we could do it this year if we're if we're good we'll do it next year you know if we're slackers then we'll forget about it um, and you can make money on this stuff you heard Gordon like okay if he said 400 pounds per acre 
will the Ukrainians say, if you grow it our way, you get a, you get a ton per hectare, which is around I don't know, 800 pounds per acre. Ton per hectare? Yeah. What's that, seed? Seed. Just the seed. Just the seed. 800 now, okay, let's say, let's say, let's say 600. Okay, now, let's say he said 33% oil, and I say 25% oil, because that's sort of the numbers that I would be. So you get 25% of that, 800, 600 pounds is weight, of, is oil, so you get 150 pounds of oil, and each pound is, uh, each gallon is nine pounds, so you get, so 150 divided by nine is, uh, I don't know, 16, 15, 16. Uh, each gallon of oil sells for how much? Don Warshak. How much, Don? $100. Each gallon sells US. for $100 US. US. Who would buy it for $100? He sells it out of Ohio. I saw it quite a pretty rapid rate. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's, that's how much fiber right is it? Well, that's like, that's is, it, is it to small industry? Do you sell to anybody big, Don, or is it all just little, little guys? Or? It's coming on stronger. You know, I used to sell a gallon here, a gallon there, and now I'm selling. Because, like, uh, from my perspective, I have a, a soap maker in British Columbia, and I thought, you know, what? I imported hemp oil from Hungary, and I thought that's stupid because I paid two hundred and twenty-five dollars a gallon for it, Canadian, and that, and you know, I'll happily pay a farmer hundred dollars a gallon for his oil. If anyone wants to make hemp oil, I'll pay for it. I'll, you know, like I'll buy it. I'll say that I'll buy it. Um, that's that's what the what that's what they're asking for is that, you know people who will want to buy stuff. I can I, I, I have another another new company that uh, came to me and said we want to start making soap as well here in Winnipeg and they uh, they've ordered you know just a, two two gallons to start with but they have you know they want to be it big they want to supply body shop that's that's entrepreneurialism driven right here from our soil uh, you know, that's that's I, I don't know that's great Yeah, you should. If, yeah, we just you talked already. That's okay. It, it, well, maybe no, it's something that hasn't, I haven't heard discussed. Yeah, I, th I think I think maybe Jersey should should. Yeah, well, if you want to talk, if you want to talk, maybe if, it's, if anybody wants to talk, then they go with because everybody has the you know to deal with this time thing. So. Well, first uh, I would like to know whether this meeting is a business meeting or political meeting. What are we trying to do? <laughs> You know, just so then we can oh. set our business objective and or political objective, because that, otherwise we're just jerking ourselves from one side to another, not knowing really what we do. So, because on political, if we, if, if this is a political meeting, or uh, we have a political objective, I would like to throw a thing like: uh, Are we trying to improve the uh, our system, or we try to redesign it? Because it. it we would have to have a different business approach if we're trying to redesign existing uh, business uh, practices and economic structure. Or we just want to improve a system that farmers will get a little more, the producers get a little more, the traders make their money, and we operate separately. Uh, there is a night in organic farming. You know, when I when I work in South America, the name organico which means organic, uh, it also means that something that is complete. And that, that's why I think that uh, to separate ourselves between the farmers and the traders and the consumers, it would make, do us all a disservice. I think I would like to, you know, through my farming or business practices, teach and learn from others what it means to be a trader, what it means to be a consumer. So I, I, I really think that coalitions are are really positive things. Also, uh, we, we have to <coughs> talk to each other about what money, what volume we're talking about. You know, it's uh, selling 50 pounds of oil or 200 pounds of oil, you know. Uh, it's not gonna make farmers produce it because we have, farmers also have to carry quite a bit of investment in startup, the startup cost of production. Uh, I just heard before about <coughs> Somebody from a business community was saying that they want to support farmers, you know. Is the business community ready to invest in, in uh, machinery or find the financing for the equipment that the farmer needs to process the, the hemp and hemp fiber? 
because it's nice to get a prize, but we are the producers will take the chances with their farms and their money by investing in production of hemp without the uh, support of, of the traders. So I would like to know whether the traders, business people, are ready to invest in production to help farmers. I can't answer Jersey's last question, but I did want to cover the issue of biodiesel as a market for the oil produced by oil seed. If you take any vegetable-based oil and remove the triglycerides using methyl esters, which is essentially an alcohol base, you will then be able to add that as an additive to diesel fuel, reduce, reducing the emission standards or reducing the emissions of the diesel fuel and pollution to within acceptable EPA standards. Biodiesel is becoming a very hard, very hot item in the United States. Yes, Don. How many gallons of fuel does it take to cultivate, plant, cultivate, and harvest an acre of hemp? I'm not looking at just hemp seed oil. We're looking at any plant oil and oil seed. We have we have a tremendous lot of oil seeds that have to be produced. My point is, if you're going to do this whole acre, you're going to come out with 16 gallons of oil. It better be more valuable. I think you can get a little more than 16 gallons of fuel per acre done using proper techniques. Well, I'm, I'm not saying that it isn't a great biomass source and it can't be used with pyrolysation and other... No, I, I meant from the oil seed. Fuel, but to take the hemp seed oil and try to burn it as diesel doesn't make economic sense. It's too valuable as food and as an industrial feedstock. It is too valuable. Now, what about when we get uh, larger amounts into production? What are we going to do with the, with the product that we can't use for human consumption because it's become, become contaminated? Why don't they have a Chinese approach to the politics? And let's make it that into a long term plan. Let's look, make a biofuel plan 25 years from now or 30 years from now. And right now, on the short term, just see how much we can get our economic base to produce the oil for the human consumption. You know? What? Just, um, I'm 72 years old almost. I farm for most of my life. Is it turned on or not? Yeah, it's on. Is it on? It's on. I grew lots of vegetable oils. I used to grow sunflower seeds for the uh, for the uh, co vegetable oils in Altona. That was a cooperative. But th there's another option besides cooperative. There's also uh, corporations. But let me tell you what happens in some cases. I'll, I'll just give you some figures, just a few figures. There's no way you're going to make this profitable just from the oil. It can't be done because sunflower oil, you can raise 2,000 pounds of sunflowers an acre. And if you only get 600 pounds, you have to have a very specialized market. And, and sunflower oil is also a, 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 you know, a very competitive oil. So is, uh, we used to call it rapeseed, now it's called canola. <coughs> if you can't compete, you have to have a very specialized market. Now we ran into all kinds of trouble with, the, with, the, with sunflowers and, and you've heard now recently how you run into trouble with canola when you get all these insects coming in there. It's pretty tough to to let your crop go down when there's billions of, of, of uh, worms in the field or caterpillars or whatever it is. So you have to take all those things into consideration. Uh, it's not that simple. I also used to grow a lot of grain and I raised a lot of turkeys. And it's, it's very tough to, uh, I used to sell my turkeys, you know, to, uh, to, uh, I, to another cooperative, it was Manitoba Dairy and Poultry. <coughs> but you see, when you get to the market, I had to pay for the turkeys and 
supply all the grain, supply all the, the gasoline, pay the taxes on the farm. But when it came to selling the turkeys, uh, the, the, the uh, retailer would take just as much. If I sold my turkeys for 35 cents a pound, they would sell it for 75 cents a pound just by taking it in the store and handing it over the counter. They got more than I did, and I paid all the costs. So you have to be very careful. If you're not competitive, you're not going to do it. Uh, and since the, the, uh, there's free trade now, there's no way you're going to keep it out. You, you've got to be competitive. If you can't be competitive, you're sunk right from the beginning. Uh, Co-op vegetable oils was a big plant. I, I, I grew 160 acres and more of, uh, of sunflower seeds. I know what it is about. And you get 2,000 pounds an acre and 40% oil, so you figure it out. The same thing applies to canola now. Canola is not that, uh, I don't know if that uh, canola has to do a lot, a lot of processing. If Okay, one other point I'd want to make. If you have an oil like that, it tends to go rancid. So you have to be very careful about that. If you, if you can't store the, store the oil properly, you have to take certain things out of it by refining it, and then you run into all kinds of problems. Now, I can tell you about organic and inorganic. I used to, I used to have to spray the sunflower seeds. It didn't happen every year, but when it happened, I had as many as 300 uh, caterpillars or worms on one plant. If you sat down in the field, you could hear them eat. And if you had, I'm not kidding true. you. That is true. true. And yeah. if you, if you, if your living is dependent on it, it's very tough not to go and spray. I did that. You know, I've, I used to listen to the experts. I could tell you about all kinds of things. I became ill after a while. I know what it's worth to, to stay healthy. I became very ill from using all these poisons that are outlawed now, lindane, toxithine. I used to use mercury poison to treat flaxseed when I was a kid, 13, 14 years old. So it's not that simple. There's, it's, it's, if you can't compete, you're sunk. So I'm much more interested in the fiber than only in the oil. You know, I, I've, uh, I've got uh, quite a few children and lots of grandchildren, and I've even got great-grandchildren. One of my grandsons wants to build houses, you know, he's learning carpentry. I would like to see him be able to use the, 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 the you know, the panels and the, if you could make two by fours and two by sixes, that would be great, you know. You've got so much fiber there, that's your best bet. But if you have only very small fields, law, like a few acres, you're not going to have insect infestation at, in the beginning. But once the insects finds out, find out what's there, and they come in in hordes, you're going to be surprised. Do you know what I mean? I don't want to take up very much of your time. I'm just telling you from experience, personal experience. That was really, really good. Um, I just a, a comment, I guess. Uh, I don't know if um, the insects, uh, what kind of problem they are in areas where hemp agriculture hasn't been, like, has been in, in place for a long time. Uh, if uh, if it has, you know, we we know that the birth of armyworm likes it, and I'm sure there are a whole bunch of other uh, other things that like it. But it wasn't mentioned, and in Ukraine is a, is you know a different. Uh, uh, climactic zone on the other side of the world, so it would be interesting to you know what what the effect of of that would be uh, with regards to the oils. If everybody started growing hemp seed, the price would go way down for sure. So your your value wouldn't necessarily be the oil anymore. It might have been a good springboard to an infrastructure to develop fiber because fiber requires infrastructure, but. The end result is that there is a flood of excellent, super healthy, all organic oil out there, which can out, you know, begin to outcompete. And who, what are the implications of having a lot of gamma linoleic acid in your uh, fatty acid in your uh, in your diet? You know, like I just don't know what how that would impact a, a generation growing up with 
that eating eating that regularly instead of re eating sweet tart uh, red dot red dye number three you know whatever they feed it, feed you at Max and the and the little grocery stores or potato chips with the funny chemicals at the back uh, BHT and BHA I, I don't know what those do to you but I'm sure I know what what hemp oil it's I don't it's and I. I know that there's a lot of creative marketers out there. I've seen what uh, California's done with things that are traditionally really yucky to eat and make them really good to eat. Uh, and I just know that there's a lot of inventiveness, especially with communications being the, the way they are. And it's that, it, that it, the, the advice is excellent. Um, but I never got a chance to even continue beyond the oil. You get your oil out, and it's, let's say it's 20 bucks a gallon instead of 100 bucks a gallon. And you, and, you, and you have like 10 gallons, so it's 200 bucks for your acre. But you still got 75% of the mulch from your press to feed off as cattle for ch or, or for chickens or for pigs or for, you know, and it's got a good protein in it, so you can make a few bucks there. Plus you still got all your stocks, and if you got a chipper, you just cut those up and use them as insulation or sell them off for particle board pressing and make a few bucks there. At a time when an, an economy that's becoming dependent on all this is going to continue to eat up your resources. Like if the market is showing tremendous signs of accepting this, this product for a lot of reasons. I got into it because I was convinced there was no turning back. And I laid everything I had on the line. And I'm, I'm, no, I'm right. <laughs> it, it, you'll, it, it, it might not be this year, but it, it probably will be next year. And if not, it's definitely going to be the year after because the world is moving. It's not standing still. And the rules that we're playing with today are not the rules we were playing with five years ago, and they certainly aren't going to be the rules we're going to play with next year. And it's moving that fast. So it's about trends, and it's about you know willingness. And if you give yourself knowledge to give yourself food anywhere you are in the world, that's the real secret, like of this whole thing, is that it gives people. You can eat the seed, and you can you can eat it, and like it, you know you get tired of eating it, but it'll keep you alive. In Nepal, in the hills, that's what they eat. That's where they get their protein from the hemp seed. Like they get lots of it from there. And and in a, and in a, you know, let's say whatever you know, the system doesn't work the way it is, and you know, you, if you've got the seed, then it, so it's not just market. You know, it's there's security. There's there's a lot of people who could care less about the market, could care less about all this stuff, still want to feel secure because they have the knowledge of how to grow something which is easy to grow. You don't, you don't need chemicals to grow it. We've proven that. You know, it's, it grows better with chemicals, but you don't need them to grow because it was growing before chemicals were ever invented. It's just, and I just think that the government making sure that industry and the marketplace want this while putting out a campaign <laughs> to totally disinform people for 60 years, it's a good crop. It's a really good crop, and uh, you know people grew it for a lot. For a lot, you know. I guess what I'm trying to say is we should take advantage of the whole plant, not just the seeds. Definitely, definitely. Thanks, Marty. I don't want to be pedantic and uh, take up more time than necessary, but uh, as a marketer. I think the key to a value-added product is positioning in the marketplace. If you have competent market professionals, they will sell a product for a good price. And if you have an integrated system, I don't pretend to know what that would be, but if the marketers are perhaps sharing with the farmers and splitting the profits, then it, this is reasonable because the marketers do their job, they make the consumer spend X amount and they split the profits. Traditionally, farmers have never had a piece of that. So, you know, for a lump sum, they sell off their product, the marketers take it, uh, produce a value-added product, and get extremely wealthy. The farmers just make end meat. And, you know, what I think we're going to have to do is change that system. That's what I want to do. And as a marketer, you know, I'm basically saying, I want to use my talents to help you. You use your talents to help me. And together, we'll make an industry because, you know, and I think that uh, this gentleman here was very correct in, in uh, saying one of hemp's virtues is its product diversity. Uh, you don't just have to rely on one market for your crop. If uh, the oil market slumps, for ha perhaps like the jojoba market did, uh, you can sell for fiber. Uh, if the fiber market slumps, you can sell particle board. You know, there's a variety. There's over 25 to 50,000 different products that this plant can be used to develop. 
Um, but it's going to take the cooperation of farmers and marketing people to exploit this. Um, if we don't have that cooperation, I as a marketer will simply go to a third world country, you know, and, <laughs> and, and I know there is a market worldwide for these products. Perhaps not as strong in North America yet as in Europe because we're not so uh, under the gun environmentally, but this will come with time. And, you know, uh, I don't know what would have to happen, but I think there would be some kind of uh, worldwide control, otherwise you're going to get the jojoba thing happening again. Uh, just a question, maybe we could talk a bit. How are we going to answer the law? We have government representatives from the federal and provincial government, and they all told us very simply, forget about commercial license. They said, we're talking, you're talking about growing and developing. You know, how do you think we, as a group, could approach the question of getting a commercial licenses to grow, because without that, I mean, we're talking like a blind chicken about colors, really. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, uh, We uh, have to address that first, then we can get into, are you ready to become a venture capitalist? Which means investing money ahead of the, of actually getting the product, or working with some kind of a financing, financing the development of it, because we don't have it. If anybody has any ideas, I think, for 15 minutes to talk about how we're going to approach the legal side of the of growing hemp in Canada. I think that's a very valid point. Um, uh, I, th I think personally that, um, no disrespect to any government people here, but uh, you know the government is basically under budget constraints, under manpower constraints. They don't have the time to go out and help us establish an industry. We are going to have to bring it to them already put together and say, look, at, these are the regulatory controls we propose. This is what Australia is doing to control the issue of hemp and marijuana. This is what Britain has done. This is what France has done. This is what various other countries have done. We propose this, 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 this. I don't... Well, well, we gotta be, you know, because we talked about, you know, I'm sorry I'm just aggressive, right? but, no. uh, you know, because we're talking about this ideas without making them precise. What is this, this, this? You see, what we should do? What can we do? Can we go to the to your member of parliament and knock at his door? Or you try to go through legislative process? Or you try to convince bureaucrats that we already have a window that they can give us permits? Because that's what it takes. Well, yeah. For example, my, my company has a spent the last two and a half years uh, developing contacts in the industry uh, for people interested in hemp value-added products such as particle board, such as uh, paper products, such as you know human consumable oil, these things. Um, so we have uh, the markets established. The only thing we don't have is a consistent quality, uh, consistent supply of good quality. So these are what the industries tell us. Uh, you know, the paper industry in British Columbia is very strong, I'm sure you're aware. And uh, I've spent my entire life in British Columbia. And there's a lot of uh, concern that the pulp prices are going to keep rising. And, uh, you know, a lot of people would prefer not to use trees as a paper source. Uh, the big concern that the industry has when we've spoken to them is how are you going to guarantee supply and how are you going to guarantee quality? If we come to them and we say, you know, our plan to guarantee quality is this. We have a network of farmers. These people are willing to go online and, and grow it. Would you be willing to sign up and say you would be willing to purchase this product? If we then take these big guns, like uh, um, uh, I don't know if you remember, but Nicole Charest said that we need big names. If we get these big names saying that they're willing to buy our product, then perhaps we can go to the federal government and say, listen, we have a market here. We have the farmers in place. We have the marketing consultants in place. We have these concepts in place. These are the regulations we propose. And to do that, we're going to have to get in a group and hammer this out and do it. And it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be fun. It's, it's going to be a lot of hard work, and it's going to be a lot of elbow grease. But I think that uh, perhaps we can do it. If we don't do it, like I said, Europe is going to get the North American market, or China is going to get the North American market, or Ukraine is going to get the North American market, not Canadian farmers. So, you know, basically, as a marketer, I will market anybody's product. I would prefer it be Canadian, but, uh, you know, uh, I can only do 
part of the whole process. We have to all come together on this. Okay. What you were saying earlier, you know, is that. Okay, sure. Like, you do it that way. Hello. You do it that way, like, like you were saying just now, by lobbying the government. But when Hearst was making uh, marijuana illegal back in the 30s, he did it by public pressure. So what's the best way to have a public pressure as to whatever way we can get the product in here, the raw material, make the value-added goods, get the consumer interested, then the consumer is going to go, hey, let's make this shit illegal because I love wearing it. You know what I mean? I mean, it's a, it's, to me, it's the trickle-up thing. Government won't do anything unless everybody wants it. Just how government wouldn't make it illegal until Hearst vilified hemp to the extent that the American public didn't even realize they were making hemp legal when they were making marijuana legal. Does that make sense? I mean, like... As a, as a marketer, I think that a good marketer can sell any product. It's up, I mean, that's the skill of a marketer, right? I mean, you look at McDonald's, and McDonald's is crap, right? But still, it sells billions and billions. Why? Because they have a successful marketing campaign. If you have successful marketers, you can sell ice to Eskimos. And I think, you know, uh, I, I have the contacts in the industry that people will buy this product. I mean, for example, the University of Washington State preeminent wood laboratories has tested uh, particle board hemp to be 275 times the strength of wood hemp and 300 times the elasticity. Uh, my father's a structural engineer and he's very excited about the possibility of zero frame construction with uh, hemp particle board. It's happening in France. I mean, we don't need to be redundant here. The research has already been done. The cultivation research has been done. The product research has been done in other countries. So why don't we get Europe to help us? Because Europe the wants the market themselves. What do you, you no, know? I, it also sounds very ethnocentric, you know? Like, I don't want to go against Europe or Ukraine against Poland, you know? With well, that's true, but look at France. I mean, France, France is not sharing any information. No, why? It's all right. Do, do you want to be like them? No. Or do you want to cooperate? You know, like we have opportunity right now to build the industry only through the cooperation with France, with Poland, with Ukraine. Without them, we, we're going to wait, we're going to meet together, we're going to pay for hotels, and the industry just not going to take off. We've got to include them in the development because they are the source for your raw product, and eventually, on the strength of those raw products that you'll be able to transform here, we get a lobby going and we can prove that it is a valuable product. So we, we should not really try to separate Work on the us and them. Right. You know, well, it's, it's you know a, that's true. You, you are correct and I apologize for being, for any, uh, we're well uh, 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 devil's advocate. any, any in, in inclination towards being ethnocentric. That's, that's not really what I meant. I'm, I'm trying to encourage the Canadian farmer to see that there together, is, yeah. you know, something for you to jump into here. Don't stand back and be conservative because basically Europe has a two to five year head start on developing products and, you know, as someone that's interested in developing these markets, either, you know, uh, if I have somebody coming to me saying, oh, geez, I would really like to build a hemp house, I'm as a marketer saying, well, geez, there's nothing available in Canada, but I can get you something from France. You know, that's basically the, what's happening right now. Or I can get you something from Ukraine, or I can get you something from Poland. I think, what, I think, what, have, I think what we have to do is, is look at uh, getting industry and the private sector on side with getting on side with the technology that's already starting to be developed in, in these other countries. Because otherwise, we're going to be starting from a situation starting from scratch and to be globally competitive. Right now, to be globally competitive with China, to be uh, what uh, Poland's putting out in Ukraine will not happen. There's, there's just too much investment into an industry to sell it to the farmers to allow for that to happen. If we're, we're on ground zero if we think that we're going to do it alone and try to sell the governments on, on what it is that we have. We're bringing, in, we're bringing in goods from other countries right now, right? Selling the idea that these great goods are great, or the oils in which the byproducts of this, this product is, is uh, producing, but it is nothing tangible that we can take to the market that we've produced ourselves, so we're, we've got to get on side with the technology of these other countries so we can be globally competitive. I, I, don't, I don't believe there's any other way. We've we got the soil, we've got the ability, we're strong. We have a field of, that was strong. 
and we should utilize We are very labor intensive still. Our labor yeah. rates are very, very high in Canada. Technology will, will bring the price down as soon as we can get the, the technology in place that will allow for that. Otherwise, the, the third world countries in that would just, I don't see they put out a superior product, but it will be so, so much more of a reasonably priced product that will exactly. go out on the marketplace. Um, you know, uh, my personal feeling is, is that uh, there's enough money in this industry potential to go around, you know, plenty of times. Because what we're talking about is you know, basically replacing the nylon industry, which replaced the hemp industry, ironically, you know, 50 years ago or what have you. Um, or, or perhaps the, the tree processing industries. Uh, you know, how many people want to continue to wipe their butt with tree paper when, you know, you might be able to do it with tree tree paper? Um, and industry you, will still continue to be an obstacle. Industry will, you'll have to sell well, it. It's true, but ultimately, Mac Lowe is a fiber processor. Eventually, if the consumer makes a decision that they want to be environmental, Mac Lowe will follow along just like everybody else. Because look what happened in, uh, I believe, in what was it, 89, when uh, you know Greenpeace marketed the British uh, paper consumers, and you know, Scott Paper got extremely scared because the British uh, people stopped buying paper for about a week. And, uh, and where are they now? Where is this cut paper now? You know that the stock went up. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Well. But they, what they happened was they, they trimmed themselves. Comments. They got they got me. They, 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 they gave up the, the non bleach paper market. You know, uh, I think these companies are already anticipating the influx of non wood agricultural pulp sources. You know, Mac Lowe has given up a contract with Time Warner for fifty thousand tons of pulp. Why did they do that? Because they're anticipating, in my opinion, the fact that non-wood pulp is going to be making fast in inroads in basically the bulk fiber market. Yeah. This is a question of sustainability. Making a tree into a house that lasts 50 years or toilet paper is not sustainable. Making a hemp plant or into a house that lasts 50 years is sustainable because it takes 100 days to grow it. So as we use up more of the world's lungs, you know, I think people are beginning to realize that as consumers, people are going to be making a more environmental choice that in turn puts pressure on the big industries. If we, we have a chance here to get in before these the, big industries. The way I understand it, right, Poland and Ukraine are very hungry right now. They come over here, they're asking for help, mm -hmm. right? They're asking for capital investment and whatnot, joint venture work. We should hook up, make the sort of the necessary alliances to do this, and then that will be something tangible. It's not a hope or a dream that we're taking to the farmers that they've actually got the equipment. It just means adapting it to our environment and uh, working with it at that point. Otherwise, we're... As we're someone that has perhaps some capital to invest, how do you, yeah, get, how do you reassure me that my investment yeah. isn't going to be so lost in the Ukraine? And modify it. No. Or, 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 or both. Yeah, that's right. why, that's, that's, worries, you that's know, why you're a businessman. That's the venture, venture capital. That's the... That's the capitalist That's way. Is. If you don't want to be a capitalist, you don't want to be but live in a consumer society. Let's redesign the society, and then I can guarantee you that you want. You going to guarantee me? I'm going to harvest a hundred pounds yeah. of hemp off my field? You know? Or, you know? Well, no, but you know, like uh, for example, in, in, in China, you know, uh, where they said to McDonald's, "Sure, come in, build a build a McDonald's," and then you know, after McDonald's had constructed it, they said, "Oh, no, you can't build there. You got to tear it down and build over there." I mean. That's a, that's a huge risk. <laughs> like what's happening in Russia and Siberia right now with their renew, like their resources, they, they're so rich in re resources in Russia, they're asking for joint ventureship to go over there, like the frack masters and the and Canadians also. and that, just to go in, uh, divvy up a portion of the uh, sort of the proceeds, right? There is 25, 25, 50 or whatever that joint venture agreement is, and let's work together and, and let's rock like get it rocking right now. That, that would happen in the next year or two years to get the proper venture capital to do that. And therefore, we can take that legitimately to the governments and, and it will push through. Yeah. And that's what we try to do with the seed, bringing all the seeds and Ukrainian seed into Saskatchewan to process, to show to the, first of all, you have to make consumer aware that product exists. Because we can get together in the hotels, like I say, and talk to each other about this fantastic product, but you already converted. I don't have to talk to you. Yes, you know what I mean, we already know. Through, through, through marketing, if you're a marketer, mm -hmm. you have to get a product to the public, and that product has to be, uh, has a value in itself, mm -hmm. plus it has to have a, for me, for my personal 
satisfaction has to have a little greater value than just in itself, has to have some social value to me. I'm not trying to put everybody on, on the same trip, but through hemp, we already talk about it, that as a plant, it has a chance to stimulate rural economy. We live in this world that we can talk about the lungs of the world and, and all this ecology, but we have a whole human ecology out of balance. And I think through the products, through the, uh, I don't want to say just hemp, we can, we can rebuild the rural economies, rural communities, and maybe then the benefits, it's not going to be only in a month. It's not going to be only that you, you, you invested 100 bucks and you, and, you, and you came back with 150. Maybe you're going to invest 100 and come back with 110, but going down to inner city of New York, you won't be, uh, or inner city in America, you won't be afraid of getting ripped off. Because we're, we're trying to, I think there's a bigger picture than just happened. Yeah. I, I agree, you don't have to sell me on that concept, don't you? No, I'm right, so we should follow the path, but what we can do to legalize it? Are, you, are we going to start the legal lobby and try to go through legislative process? Or we can use the window that exists already, the Canada give permit. And it's much easier, I think, to go through administrative, administrative way to obtain the permit than to change the law. And I think, the, you know, our strategy should be to go to the health and say, look, you, it's a valuable product. There's very wide benefits from social to, le to, to work creation, to economical. Open up the door. You're already giving permits. We've, so, all, we've already been given. You know, what we're doing here is we're losing the man who started this conversation because he, he was the one that started before and said, let's get together. And then he got up and then we sort of, in six minutes, he, he was talking too much and already he's walking out the door because he's going around and around and around. And we've all heard the story. We all know about this resource. We don't need to sit here and talk to each other about how great it is. This is foolishness. You're here to set up an organization. You are farmers and business people and whatever, and you're not here to bullshit each other. Now enough. Before that guy who just was telling us how to do it walks out the door, let's five minutes say, do you want to organize yourself? Do you want to set up something? In Amsterdam, I talked to the gentleman who set this up. I said, you guys are the guys. This is the province. You, you've gone the farthest of any of us in this country. It's the center. It's the easiest for us to get to. This is the place. We got farmers, we got industry people, we got agriculturals, we've got entrepreneurs, we've got activists, we've got cooks. That's enough. This is enough. I've taken it and that's all I've, I've got to get here. Sorry, Shenyi, goodbye. <laughs> You're the center. This is the place, Manitoba. You start this organization right here. You call it whatever you want to call it. But you've got the power here. You've got Reichardt, you've got the guy in Brandon, you've got Portage by hometown history. What else do you need? And you're sitting here talking about Kimberly Clark and all of the things that we've been through. Thank you very much. Three years of this. I know, I know. Now, I, my name is Larry Dupre. I live in Montreal. I was born in Morris, Manitoba. I was brought up in Portage La Prairie for 25 years. I've been slugging away at the garment trade out of the Orient. For a long time, I did very well. For a short time, I did badly. I've been involved in the hemp movement for three years. I've got myself on the board of directors of an association which wants to be the certifying element of North America. I think it has a chance to do that. We will tell the industry when they're making a mistake with hemp because we're passionate about it. We don't want anybody to say that this is hemp and it's not. So HIA is going to be out there. And whether it's American, uh, uh, whether there's America, too much American influence or what, there's Europeans on it, there's Australians on it, but I'll tell you where this thing started, Southern California. It started in Southern California. So pay homage to where it started. That's where the revision started. And it came and now we're sitting here, we have all these things. Enough with all the stories. 
The thing is that Manitoba and the hemp alliance that exists here is the basis of the Canadian industry. Uh, it, it's not happening, Joe's not here, and neither is Jeff, and neither are the guys from the farm, and neither are the Quebec guys that haven't got a crop. It's right here. So you have to do what this gentleman said. Figure out how you're going to get this co-op together, or it's going to be a co-op, it's just going to be an association. You formulate that you want to do it. You've got a few farmers that, that would like to throw their bodies on the road, because some of us are throwing our bodies on the road. We have invested three or four years of our time. Some are making it and some aren't. But we're throwing our bodies on the road. And to bring this back to this point where we can create industry in our communities, and many of us believe what you said, we do want to bring this industry back to communities. We want to grow it just outside of town and produce paper on the outskirts of Portage and have, a, have Carmen doing chipboard in another place doing oil. It is absolutely possible. This is an oil well. And we have the possibility to milk that oil well. But we will not go one minute past this place if we don't get ourselves together to tell the government how we want to be licensed and how many farmers we can interest because we're, the farmer has actually got enough interest in it to stay. He, he's not going to be giving his crop away free and experimental. He's going to have some end users. We have end users right now. We ha I can buy some of the crop and distill it. If you guys would like to smell my wallet, you'll find out why. There's a perfume trade out there that we haven't talked about. Not only the oil or the fiber, we have end users in this country. We need to organize ourselves today or tomorrow at, at the last moment, which is the, the last meeting, and get us a name and start with a, 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 a semblance of a charter and include inclusive of North America because the Vermont people are going to vote in a few weeks and so is Colorado and next year when we have this conference again or symposium, I would hope that we'd have Americans here, agricultural people, and we'd have more farmers and we would be out with the message, but we go nowhere if we go around and around this turn again like we're doing tonight. Yeah, so, so where's the guy with the red tie? Larry. Where is he? Are you in? Am I in? Yeah. Am I in? Well, you are the one I'm who, in. who, who told you're in, me. I'm in. You told me right here. You said, I, I. There's the gavel. Well, Share the meeting. I, you <laughs> said to me, I will not be in a farmer owned. Right. Selma and Great. French organization. And you inspired that spark in me. Didn't need much inspired. But I want to be part of this organization. I want to be buying fiber from the farmer. I want to be figuring out technologies with the, the Ukrainians because there's some money that we can get to them. It's all bullshit till we get this thing down in an organization where we run it on a somewhat parliamentary basis where we get people to get the understanding of how we lobby the government through our ag reps and within a year we are not giving away the fiber for experimentation purposes. I cannot see how I can consciously go to farmers and I have gone to Portage of Prairie two years ago and I've introduced it to some of my friends and they were here and I can and say, hey, I want you to grow 10,000 acres, but the RCMP might come along and test it, and if it's 1%, they might burn it down. So we have a lot of big questions here that have to be answered inside the organization. Number one is, what are we going to do with that THC level? Number two is, when are we going to be able to sell it? Because we can't experiment much too much longer. He said several years. Did anybody hear that this morning? Several years. Well, you know, several years is like, uh, I don't have too many more several years left. Exactly. You guys, some of you guys, you know, that uh, going out and just going all night have, but I don't. So in two or three years, with some of the farmers that are here, we can get this organization together. It, next year, I would say that we need farmers from every province, and we need it, we need it now. You must now. Are you, Share it. I don't know how okay. to share it. So, so here, okay. have you got a name? Have you got a foundation? Are we going to start at least that? Am I out of here? Yeah, I just, uh, well, let's, let's just, I don't know, I just thought, let's assume that we are an organization. We're a group and we're in the middle of a meeting, you know, uh, we just pretend. How do we deal with the law? You have to do it. No, no, don't 
don't lose his momentum. Yeah. Yeah. Just, 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 a, just a quick thing. The window of opportunity is here. The executive director of the Bureau of Dangerous Drugs has told me personally that the Liberal Caucus will look favorably on any reasonable list of criteria for the industrialization and commercialization of hemp in Canada for the 96 crop year. You draw up the plan, you give it to an MP, we have one, my MP will present it to caucus, caucus will look favorably upon it. They will then go and tell the bureaucrats in the Bureau of Dangerous Drugs, this is what you people are going to do. Okay, now let her go. Now, if, we can, if somebody within the group in the next few days or whatever comes up with a plan, um, a, 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 a structure that would work, and I let everybody here that signed up and left their name and number or whatever, and I let everybody know what this plan is, and it was really cool, would everybody, and if everybody then took that plan to their MP and asked that MP, their MP to present it on a certain day or a certain time or whatever, and all of a sudden you had this wave of MPs all presenting a motion, would that change the law? That's a good idea. And if it doesn't change the law, just go it anyways, and then they'll be forced to make a decision on it. Like is, that, is that a strategy we could embark on, a simple, straightforward one? Because I, I respect organizations, and all those people who want to get involved in organizations get going for sure, but I personally am done with organizations. I, I need some private time. <coughs> so, um, I, but, you know, and I think that when it's private, you can act in your own kind of way, and you can, it's fun for yourself, and it's nobody else's agenda, it's your agenda, it's, there's a lot of reasons. But <coughs> something like that, it doesn't require a commitment, it doesn't require like uh, stru a structure meeting, people driving, using gas, the whole thing taking time out of their schedule to work that way. Maybe, you know, there's a, we just gotta, I don't know, just trick them. They tricked us, we'll just trick them back, you know? Just, it, it, we, yeah, I don't know, see, it, it could work. It, it could be easy, and then we could have commercials, and then we'd be rich. So what are we waiting for? First of all, we have to get seats in the country. Well, it, it, we, there's, there's, okay. We, doing that. Yeah, yeah, well. But we're, people are gonna have to put themselves on the line to do that. Well, okay, like seeds, like viable seeds. Yeah. So the farmers can grow it. Yeah. Well, there, there's viable seeds. You know, like if maybe Don twenty-five farmers started to grow it. You no, know, I mean, and, and and the RCMP went out there and tested, and as the Ukrainians <coughs> say, that there's zero percent THC hemp available. Then, you know, it's just going to take a large group to do it, though. I mean. Yeah, you know, I've been listening to all this, and what I want to say is for the farmers, if, if, you, if you are able to grow a 10-acre test plot or something, and then, you, you know, before they take the, you know, your, everything away from you, what you should say that you want to continue your, your research and development, and what you should do by doing that is see if you can dehull sprouted hemp seed, because that would be a great thing to do if you're going to sell, you know, frozen sprouted hemp seed foods. That you know, that's the, the, the you know the next step. So, I just wanted to put that out so you know people that are lucky enough to do it can act on it. Thank you. Hi. Um, well, I'm, what I'm proposing because I've been kind of sitting here listening, and what I, what I'm proposing is that I will draw up what I perceive to be uh, issues that have been raised at this meeting and I'll put them up into some kind of be it resolved that kind of phraseology if that's, uh, if that's okay with, it, with everybody here. And what we could do is everybody who's here gets a copy of this document and if there's something that you don't, if you think is missing or you'd like to add to, you can do that. And if, is that, does that sound like a reasonably organized way of proceeding? Oh, we have scary to me. Yeah, I, know. Yeah, I know it's scary, <laughs> but you can. But each, I mean, each one of you, uh, if we, if we, you know, it's like uh, I don't, don't want to use a well, government type of analogy, but basically, what we want to do is we all. Right now, we've all got a lot of ideas, and here we're agreeing on a lot of uh, us agreeing on a lot of different ideas. But what we've got to do is we got to write it all down, and then we got to put our name to it, and that's where, that's where when uh, Mark goes and. Mark goes to his MP, he sees these names, he sees very clear idea of what these people want to do. I mean, basically what we're doing is, it's a business plan concept, right? We've got to be clear on what, thing, what the things are we want to do with it. And we, when we present it to, to the government, they see that we're organized, we know what we're doing, 
we dotted the I's and crossed her T's. And uh, I mean, that's, that's, my, that's my idea. And uh, I'd be willing to work with anybody else to develop such a document. And uh, I love writing documents, being a, a bureaucrat, you know. So, uh, but this would be a fun document. We need a quick so, question. Yes, yes, yes. What's your experience with this? No, it's, let's just, uh, excuse me, it's very easy to get organized. If you want to do it nationwide or include the Americans, you, you form a committee here. If you want to do a Manitoba thing, you form a board of directors. You draw up a charter and you register it with the provincial government. There is no question that the there's no question that the government won't allow you to do it. You may have for a few years. You may have to get a permit, a temporary permit, <coughs> until you become established, and then you get a permanent license to grow it. It's not a big deal. It's very easy to organize. There's nothing to it. You draw up a charter. You 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 form a nominating committee. You form a board of directors. You hold uh, monthly meetings and and get people interested. And that's how you start going. That's what we did. I was there at the beginning of the uh, sunflower seed at Co-op Vegetables Oils in Otona. I know how it's done. Well, then let's do it right now. Get it done before we leave here tonight. Well, all you need is a check and call the to hold a meeting to get the people together. But, well, I, I think it's a good idea to have a common resolution. What you propose to write, it would be sort of our... After this meeting, we have a common statement. There's another strategy that uh, just came up. That, uh, you know, uh, there have been negotiations with the with the Native uh, Americans in, in, in uh, Canada. Maybe we could ask them to grow hemp. Yeah. They have a permit. They can obtain the permit with, through the autonomous uh, government. There's many strategies. Yeah. But, I think, but I think just putting a resolution together that we have a common goal. And as far as organization, you know, I mean, anybody who is here puts the name, we have organization. To start another meeting, I don't know. Is that how you did the? Uh, well, we started organic organic farmers group in uh, 1982 with 12 people in 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 Quebec, and uh, it's uh, 15 years later we have 35,000 members in uh, 35 countries, and it's a grassroots organization that started without any government subsidies, without any government anybody's money, just self-supporting, and I think the same thing can be done with the with the uh, hemp, I would want to just, again, I don't want to limit to the farmers. I think we have to, no, no, we have to do it as farmers a... farmers don't want to limit to the farmers. Right. Yeah. You know, so they... So right now, what you were saying, set up the organization. You have an ad hoc committee that yeah. prepares the uh, elections, that prepares the membership. Uh, elect right here from Manitoba, three people, five people. Uh, this is the center. And that's, and let's do it. So I nominate uh, Martin to, to, to take the charge of the ad hoc committee and, and, and create a team. I second that motion. Okay, I was just saying to Martin, um, I'm seeing people leaving and, you know, there's, there's a lot of talk here and really exciting talk and a lot of it is new information I haven't heard before, other things I have heard before. And I think everyone feels the same way. But we're in a position here where we've got people from the Ukraine and Poland and business people from the States, Canadian farmers, um, Canadian business people. Like this is very unique. I've been watching and been, I've been part of this movement for the last few years and I've never seen this mix of people in one room. And today we've had speakers and it's been, um, you know, we've broken new ground and it's, it's been life-changing for me just to, to hear and to be enriched by what everyone had to say. But now is the time to really put something on paper. And um, you know, we've heard from a mix of people, which is great. But I would think it would be a shame for people to leave without actually getting a board together, getting a name, um, having a plan of some kind. Um, you know, Martin was just elected as the chairperson, so that's great. But I'd, I'd really like to see or nominated <laughs> the chairperson. Um, like I don't know. You said there, there's a form, a format. Very easy. To do. Very easy. Easy. You know. So I think Very we should do it. <laughs> Take a step. This this is a a monumental moment in history. So you can't. I just I just had an idea. Um, okay, what a board and that kind of it requires commitment. Um, there's ten seats on, at a table behind me. If anybody I don't know. 
let's, you know, if you want to sit on a board and, and make a commitment to try to make it happen, uh, maybe go sit there or something. And, or, I don't know. Any women? No. Not many women. See, you got BC, Alberta, Saskatchewan, Quebec, Manitoba. Hi, my name's Grant Krieger. I'm out of Sask Camp, out of Saskatchewan. Um, I'm in a very unique position because I suffer from multiple sclerosis. I also have my wife who owns Highwear Hemp Company, which I am uh, I help out with every once in a while. I had a meeting with Eric Upshaw, who's the Minister of Agriculture in Saskatchewan last week, or the week before, wanting to find out how I was going to get money for a program to grow to grow the plant in Saskatchewan. <coughs> His first comment was to me, "Well, can we smoke the clothes?" So I took care of it. While I was talking to him, I lit the lighter and I let it burn the cloth for about a minute while I talked to him. Then I put it out, walked over to him, wiped off the black mark, handed him the cloth, and he tried to rip it apart. <laughs> he couldn't do it. Took care of the smoking the clothes routine. The next comments that came out across the table were about long hair is smoking pot. Well, unfortunately, sir, I have multiple sclerosis. I do smoke pot. It helps me an awful lot. That shut the jokes down right then and there. It was down to serious business on how I was going to get my crop planted. I currently have a researcher at Indian Head, Saskatchewan, who's going to plant research crops for me this year. I've accessed money through three different locations. I have the PFRA who have a nice shelter belt they want to experiment with. All because I shut them down on the joking part. There is no joke when it comes to the plant. It has to be planted for environmental reasons as well as is because it is a renewable resource. The only way to get past the politicians is by shutting them down at every avenue on the joke side because we're not in a joking situation anymore. Larry, what the hell are you doing sitting way back there? You're the jerk there. who got me fired up to get up there. Get up there. Thank you Come very much for coming, Larry. Thank you very much for volunteering. So we have everything we need here to get this marketing board going. Well, whatever. This national, committee. this national committee going, we have everything. Because we have business people, we have farmers, bureaucrat, bureaucrat and an MS sufferer. So there's no shit. Okay. I think uh, just looking at uh, the whole table here, I think we've got representatives from every province. I know for uh, our company, we're going to set up a nonprofit organization out of um, Calgary, so to represent Alberta. I think everyone on this uh, committee can be doing very much similar in their province to get a sort of a representative voice within the province and then have this as a national body uh, committee that's sort of governing each one of these uh, uh, different provinces. but. As a, a collaborative effort, um, I think we can uh, make a lot of headway doing that. We can get a number of people within your province on side, and it, it's sort of be an educational curve. We're sort of planting the seed in each, every, in each and every province that everyone is going to be a voice, and uh, then we'll go hard at the governments and uh, get the job done. Uh, 
Uh, and also, uh, my company, Renaissance Natural Resources, is making a personal commitment to help people market and find financing. Um, take my word for it, it's not a difficult problem to find money. There's more people out there with more money than they know what to do with. All you have to do is present them with a concrete, logical, viable plan. And I think we have the people in this room, on this board, to help do that. Um, you know, BC has pulp technology, uh, a variety of things, and uh, there's money out there, people. We just have to make a plan. My name's uh, Neil Strayer. I'm a farmer in Saskatchewan, an organic farmer by nature. I'm also a trader. I started farming in 1978, and uh, uh, my company commenced operations in 1981. Uh, well, I think what I bring to the table here is uh, experience in trade, but also experience with the regulatory system in this country. Uh, in 1982 or three, I guess it was 83, my, uh, one of my associate farmers and I approached the Canadian Wheat Board about wanting to market organic grain into the European market. And the Canadian Wheat Board Act is an act of parliament and reads <coughs> quite simply, the Canadian Wheat Board will, by its mandate, handle 100% of Western Canadian, and this is talking Manitoba West, 100% of Canadian wheat, oats at the time, Durham and barley, full stop. So we had, we, had a, we had a problem on our hands because, of course, we were trying to circumvent the process of Canadian Wheat Board. It's an act of Parliament. The, the Wheat Board refused our proposition. What we did is stuck a lawyer in their face and, and a couple of affidavits from end users saying, we want this product. We recognize organic as, as, as an entity. And um, within a month, we had an export license in the Canadian Wheat Board. My company exported one container of hard red spring wheat to England in the summer of 83. This year, we'll do over 400 to eight countries in Europe. So I have, I have some experience in trade. I have some experience in the regulatory framework. And I see an analogy here with, with the hemp issue. It's, it's a regulatory issue. I think what we need to do is get in the face of Health and Welfare Canada and, and point out to them, with some backing, obviously, that we have industrial utilization of some of the products and byproducts that we're talking about here. You have to create a compelling argument to create a scenario where they will feel obliged to, uh, to conform. Or, or, or to move ahead with the process. And I, I don't think it's, it's really all that overwhelming. I think we need to, to uh, approach them with a very cogent argument and multifaceted, it, it may be, on, on what we're about. And uh, if, it's, if it's got uh, economic sense to it and, and, it's, and it's, uh, it's been worked out and thought out and, and we can put it on paper, uh, I think it makes a pretty good argument for creating a scenario where, where permits will ultimately, maybe not this year, but will ultimately have to be issued. So that's all I have to say. Not at all. No, the more the merrier. In research, we would have a problem not yeah, having yes. one uh, yeah, let's. Uh, you get the mic next. Uh, one, one, one other thing. I'll leave us. I, I apologize for my tirade, uh, but uh, um, there is one thing that we should take from the multi-level marketing uh, business that is very successful throughout North America. That is, uh, there are a lot of things we can take from their way of marketing. It's an incredible. And, and diverse way of marketing product. But one of the things that they do is they use their product. I, I, one of the, the strangest things over the last three years as I've wandered through this hemp uh, network is that I find a lot of people who are in that don't use it. And it's a very simple saying, use it or lose it. We have to start to convert ourselves we need to use hemp paper where possible, have stationery at least in hemp paper, have our cards printed in hemp paper, develop a wardrobe in hemp, 
use as much of it as individuals in who are involved in it as you can because you're the front line and if you're not using it don't expect anybody else is going to so there are several people here that produce things all of you guys are going to be able to get it wholesale that should be sort of one of the understandings or if not you know at, at one point these will be trade shows There'll be goods outside. People will be buying for themselves or buying for their shops or be making deals. But you must start to use the product. You're not using it. You're, you're, you're not involved in the hemp business. It, it unfortunately takes that kind of commitment. If you have a hemp store, if you have a hemp anything, you should have hemp tea towels. Your coffee filter should be hemp. Your shoes and clothing should be hemp. You should have hemp oil and seeds. You should be using this product. There are stores here in... in You're selling us again. Right here in Winnipeg, you can buy at the hemp exchange most of these items. And, and if you're not wearing this stuff next time I come to the conference, and if you're not buying some of the stuff I'm going to bring to sell to you, then, of course, the movement will never now get used. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so give it to the government guy that knows how to set up these things. Yeah. Right there. Yarn growth plate. Okay, yeah. Uh, Cameron, where are you? Yarn growth plate. Yarn growth plate. Oh. And, uh, tell me how it works out. And, uh, for my part, perhaps I will uh, approach the provincial minister of cooperative development ask him how we establish legitimacy provincially and then from there in concert with the Minister of Agriculture we get the two ministries working together to help us get some legitimacy so I, I gotta feel legitimate and then from there we can work nationally so next week I'll call both of those departments okay. all right good night thank you thank you So you'll be calling them with uh, with the document that we're all going to write up and sign? Yeah. I'll call Mark. Okay, cool. All right, so uh, now as, uh, as our constituents, what kind of reporting scheme would you like? Would you like us to uh, report back to you every two weeks, one week, uh, or just shall we report to you when there's some kind of news to be... Uh, Reported. I deliver something, you're going to coordinate communication between each other. Everybody's so going to email. But wouldn't it be better just e to set up an ad hoc committee of small to get the ball rolling? This is so big. I think, I think modern technology can address those communication concerns. Uh, okay. yeah. I mean, just email for one. What? Yeah. 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 What, what, one point. May I have an order for yeah. a second? This is this is basically I'm I'm trying to get the whole kind of ground rules of how the you know we, we will we will we will draw up what what we believe to be you know representative of your your views right but of course we're going to have to get some feedback from you after we've drawn up what we interpret to uh, be your views because even amongst this this table here I think we still have a few conflicting views that we'll probably have to hammer out in our ad hoc committee but I just want to find out when people would like us to report back to them on what what it is we've actually uh, drawn up when we get it drawn up yeah let's not give ourselves too many places to hang you know, hang ourselves and number one number actually two, I'm setting a deadline yeah, I'm well, setting a deadline for us to report back give ourselves a, but one just one thing clarify one week before we go before we go too far, can uh, this would be in a, in the form of a resolution? Should Correct. Can we assume uh, that all the people that signed and paid for this conference become automatically um, uh, members, or in fact, they're known as what's the word? The Hamster. Charter. Uh, Hamster. Charter. Charter. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Don that the, the met people that have paid $100 for this conference become the charter members of this organization. They can choose 
I, I'm just making a suggestion here, but they can choose to drop out, to not pay their next fees, whatever they may be, to say I don't want to be, but shall we, for all sorts of purposes, assume that everyone who paid the hundred dollars is a charter member of this association? Can that? Can, so that everyone who is here is gets a free charter membership for one year. Everyone who's <laughs> paid paid the hundred, whether they what stayed or they didn't stay. Free. I came for free. And you have to pay a hundred bucks. <laughs> yeah. Whatever, whatever, whatever the system of the mailing list is, the mailing list, because it's a mailing list that I want. <laughs> we can barter for seats or something. Yeah. But, but is that technology? Is uh, Martin? Okay, so then uh, we are we are then basing a, on the that we have that many people in our organization, so that we can start from that, which, now, which is a mailing list that belongs to this organization at the front, and which is a mailing list that the group as a whole or the executive can decide to sell, rent, or or uh, distribute because it also has some value. Okay. Um, I nominate Larry to speak on all occasions. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, we need to do I sort of, uh, I envision right now that um, what we'll have is sort of a, a, a national uh, nonprofit organization of which we'll all be members of. Also, too, uh, provincially, we'll all uh, be instrumental in starting up each of our own provincial uh, nonprofit organizations. And collectively, we will have one person that will be nominated to report uh, on it sort of on on this board um, monthly say for instance getting a monthly not necessarily a publication it could be by email whether you want to put it on hard copy and get it out to everyone so that everyone that's not linked through uh, through those types of communications will be very much an integral part of it and involved but that's the way I see it right now we'd have to represent somebody to sort of we will all email assuming we are on uh, all on internet and uh, have got email that we all email our information provincially what's happening uh, in our area and then as a group we will come together as one publication mm -hmm. and also you're you're responsible for your own organization to get your own uh, information out to your members but as a group here we will be nationally linked and sort of go that road that that's the way I envision it <laughs> I don't know. Monthly newsletter. Yeah, I would say that would be. Even if it's half a page, monthly, it doesn't matter. Monthly for sure. I don't get anything over that. I guess we get over so free month, free membership, free membership and monthly newsletter. Can we afford that? Sure. Okay. What? Oh, you've got to have action items. If you're going to have an organization, you've got to name for everyone. And you've got to have a mission. It's a mission. Yeah. Level. At it's least, that, basic, uh, you know, theme to work on. At least the, theme, the theme could be getting to the government for licensing procedure. Just something which is a $50 application for a nonprofit organization. We have a title, we, we get a name for ourselves, and we do that before the end of the weekend here. That's all and we have right. a representative that will uh, put together the paperwork for that. I'll put, and, the, uh, I'll put together the paperwork. I'll be your scribe. Right I'm just a scribe. I'm not scribe. <laughs> it's got to be five board of directors of which we've got. So. Mr. Chairman. And I'll have signature. I'll have to have signature too. If you decide on a name, you have to uh, check whether that name is allowable. Yeah, uh, there's a search. There will be a search done, right. right? Yeah. You can get it done. In well, assuming we we'll come up with yeah. one name, we'll do a search of that. We'll have to and alter it. Is the name something. going to be the next thing on this uh, agenda? Yes. Then uh, I would like to offer the uh, the possibility to open the floor. Open the uh, okay. How, how can we open the floor? Uh, open the let's channel. open the floor then to names. Canadian Hemp Association. Exactly. Canadian Hemp Association. It's not descriptive enough. Canadian Hemp Association. Oh, it's got to be well, Canadian no, Hemp Incorporated. Who is going to be a scribe? I'm writing down Canadian Hemp Canadian Incorporated. Hemp Association. Canadian Hemp. Uh, Corporation, Corporation Canadian Hemp. No, no, no. Hold on a sec. You can't go incorporate. Should we? Okay. You got to go associate. Should, Society, should we make the mistake of yes. making ourselves yes. national? Okay. As we did, as we decided in Phoenix a few years ago, we we said this is going to be an international organization. 
of industrial people, and we took the name America and United States out of it. And possibly that might be an idea here that that uh, we don't include just uh, that name because you may be working with Minnesota, North Dakota, and Montana uh, people very, very easily, very, very simply. What about, what about Canada and Castle? And, uh, and the Flux Council, Canada, you get a lot of society. And it is, you know, you can incorporate people from Council. Minnesota. Sounds like an overdue amount of money. Yeah, I know. So we'll and this call is ourselves also doesn't have to stay forever. <laughs> Canada Council, you know. So what's your head? Canadian Hemp Council. It's, it's nice because it's near like the that. Canada Council, and you know you can get money yeah, for it. Well, not so, so, so much anymore. Yeah. Well, what about the North American Hemp Council, too? Well, well, well put the word industrial in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah we, we yeah. definitely yeah. put the yeah. word industrial in there. So Canadian Industrial Hemp Council. Right. Yeah. Well, maybe, well, you're always nice to have mechanisms. So, what is Canadian industrial hemp? Makes it long. Makes it long. Yeah. Place it somewhere. Works for me. How will Canadian hemp industry council when it's chick? Cool. <laughs> we we had chick in the U.S. We we or did Canadian come up industrial in the council US. for hemp. In fact, I think we were chick for about six months. Okay. <laughs> chick didn't make it for chick. I think industrial needs to be in there. I think industrial is a really important word. It makes well, because you're because you're distinguishing these because you're, people think industrial. That's right. Yeah, you're, yeah. And you're saying industrial, and everybody thinks industrial is you know. Yeah, but when you grow your grass and you sell it, industrial. 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 Well, that's industrial. Yeah, this is industrial. <laughs> we'll get to that. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, Canadian yeah, hemp. Anybody Canada. else? Uh, any other names well, that could? Hemp, the cooperative name sometimes scares people. I mean, it, it scares know, financiers. It scares financiers. Besides, you have to charter as a cooperative. If yeah. you're going to call yourself yeah. a cooperative, you have to charter yourself as. Such. We've had. Uh, <laughs> I think that's a kind of community, you know. The, the names in which you can use society, council, association, these types of things for nonprofit. Yeah. Community, you can't, you can't use camp. Camp, community Hemp Industries Association. Community Hemp Industries Association. Everybody write down what they think. Bring them all to the table and uh, we'll yeah, make a quick decision. How about the Canadian Industrial Hemp Producers? No, then I qualify as a producer. Mm -hmm. I'm a farmer and I don't want it. <laughs> I want to be a. I like to be a. Any industrial hemp councils? Or Canadian hemp industries? Canadian hemp coalition? That's a good idea. Hmm. Canadian hemp industries. CHC, you know, CFC. CHC, it's about time for uh, that to uh, come back, you know, the CCF, the CHC. Uh. My, my store I own in Vancouver is the Canadian Hemp Industries. Can't do CHC. CHC, but go ahead. I'll well, you better we go to the Canadian Council of Hemp. We're all we're getting closer. CC. CCF. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just. That's, that's, hemp. Hey, hey, that's nice. Canadian Industrial Hemp Sorry? Coalition. Beautiful. That's I, don't, beautiful. I, don't know. That's I think, you know, it comes down it's to five names and voting on it. Yeah. 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 Canadian yeah. Industrial yeah. Hemp Coalition. I like the way that's And basically, cost is something that promotes. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, I agree with that. We like council. We like council in the days of looking for a name for hire. And we thought about uh, the Hemp Council. And uh, <laughs> needless to say, you guys don't know why you got rid of that one. So the Canadian Canadian Hemp Council, Canadian yeah, Hemp Council, I think CHP, I think Canadian Hemp go. Council, CHC, Canadian Hemp Council. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. It does sound good. There's no industry so, in there. Yeah. Canadian Hemp Council of Industry. <laughs> Canadian Hemp Council, where do we stand? What are the choices? Okay, yeah, we've got, we got a bunch of different choices here. We've got... Uh, How's voting taking place, show of hands? This is gonna be yeah, voting, voting's taking place by a show of hands, so uh, you got to put up your hand or you're not counted. We'll read them all. Okay, Canadian, Canadian Hemp Association, Canadian Hemp Society, Canada Hemp Council, 
Canada Canadian Hemp Council, Canadian Indust Industrial Hemp Council. Uh, Can you read it? No, I can't read this. No, uh, industrial Canadian, Canadian Industrial Hemp Coalition and Canadian Hemp Council. So, uh, I said that twice. That's because Larry said it so many times. It finally means right twice. North American Hemp Council. North American Hemp Council is one. I move nomination closed. I second that. Okay, make a vote one at a time. All right. Start from the bottom. Oh man, don't confuse me. <laughs> okay, North American Hemp Council. Quick, 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 quick. Uh, Canadian Industrial Hemp Coalition. Got one, two votes for that one. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Canadian. No, I already said that one. Uh, Canadian Industrial Hemp Council. That's a good one. Two, three, four, five. Five, six. Can that was Canadian Industrial Hemp Council. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, that was a whole bunch, right? <laughs> that would look like more than five. Seven. That's a busy one. Seven. Seven. Say that one again. Let's get a vote on that. I got the tally, the vote tally person over here counting at seven. I counted five, and you missed me and him, so that's seven. Okay. Canadian. What was they switched votes to? Okay. Once more. Okay. Canadian Industrial Hemp Council. There is. That's the next one. Why don't we could take it back to it? Well, we could get it down, narrow down to two. Okay. Yeah, that's right. That's a good idea. Let's take it. Okay. So Canadian, Canadian Hemp Council. I like that one. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six. Back there, I saw six, seven, eight. Oh boy. Gonna make it tight. That was Canadian Hemp Council. So we have, right now. And then there's Canadian. Yes. 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 Okay. That, oh, that's nine. You remember? Remember? Uh oh. <laughs> okay. How about uh, Canadian Hemp Society? Dead. And Canadian Hemp Association. Okay. So we got these two. Uh, Canadian Hemp Council again. Let's do them both. Let's say, yeah, them, both yeah, say them both. So it's the last two, the, the, the two potential winners are Canadian Hemp, the runner-up in the name of the society, no, sorry, Canadian Hemp Council and Canadian Industrial Hemp Council. Okay, so first the voting for Canadian Hemp Council. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Uh oh. There's probably another one there to make it fourteen. Anyway, Canadian Industrial Hemp Council. Well, that's what we just voted on. Oh, that was Canadian Hemp Council. Oh, boy. Okay, so one. The way we do this democratically is that one guy's getting on one side of the room, the other guy's getting on the other. There's two votings going on. Okay, no, no, no. I think we're being fair here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. It carries yeah. <laughs> So we are now Canadian Industrial Hemp Council. This name couldn't be reviewed in a year. So once we run the uh, search on, it's probably taken. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody just ran out and <laughs> copyrighted it. Chiha, right. you guys are now known as Chiha. 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 That sounds Western Canadian. I like it. That sounds Western. All right, so uh, we've we've got uh, one thing resolved for tonight. So that's pretty damn good. <laughs> Canadian Industrial Hemp Council. And the next, uh, we should take a look at uh, the, the mission. Just uh, one. Uh, line. Missions take a long time to write up. But, but one line. One line. A one, to advocate a, a industrial one or two hemp line line mission statement. Okay. Uh, how about can we do this? Uh, where we have people like write down what they think the mission should be, and then we'll sort of take a look at it because uh, to fine tune it. So, 
dream about tonight. Yeah. One person, if, whoever thinks they have a Ethan Green, Green. Jason's got it. How about whoever thinks they have a mission statement, they say.